Good morning, Calvary Chapel, French Valley. I want to start by reading um, out of Psalm 19, verse 1. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. You know, um, it's so important for us to um, go out and look at God's creation, because what we see in it is the fact that God is creator God. And you can see it in sunsets or sunrises or, uh, you know, you can see it um, in, in uh, just weather kinds of things. Uh, I think of uh, the northern lights. I don't know if you have a desire to go see those, but um, I do. And um, some have seen them. And, you know, it's just important for us to understand that God is who he says he is. And the heavens declare that. Amen? Well, let's pray. Fathers, we just bow before you. We are thankful that you are God. And we do believe, Father, that your heavens do declare that you, Father, alone should be glorified. We pray, Father, for the hurts of people that uh, are a part of this church. We pray, Father, that you would minister to them at the level that they need. And I pray... Lord, that you would bring people into um, each person's life to be a source of strength, of encouragement, Father, of edification, that you, Lord, would help people to get through difficult times. And Lord, as we look at what's coming, we just pray that you would give us the strength and the energy and the, uh, the, the ability to see hope in you each and every day. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I just wanted to share with you, and it's interesting because both of the people I'm going to um, talk about aren't here. One of them's in children's ministry, and the other one is uh, home not feeling well. But Chuck and Jane Adams just celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So Chuck is here, and just, um, you know... Tell him happy anniversary and just uh, bless him because um, what a what a great thing to be uh, in a relationship that long. He doesn't look that old. Jane definitely doesn't look that old, but you know, 50 years that that is something special, right? Um, the other thing I wanted to share with a couple of other things I want to share with you. Next Sunday is the Uplifting Prayer Sunday, so stick around after church and pray. Whether there's one or 50. Um, we'll, we'll be having that prayer time. So stick around and pray. And as we've talked about, prayer is a necessity. I also now want to ask you to pray about uh, Pastor Brandon um, in Indonesia. Um, he's um, leading our ministry, uh, STL International over there. Uh, a lot of things are going on. Shine Fellowship, a church that we planted that Pastor Rick has taught at multiple times, um, is going well. Um, but Pastor Brandon's uh, family has uh, been sick. His two girls, uh, both of them have been in the hospital. And so I'd ask you that uh, you would pray for Pastor Brandon. Brandon has grown from this little chunky guy to um, just a really neat uh, chaplain at a school. And uh, he is an evangelist. Uh, and hopefully around Christmas time, he'll be coming and uh, you'll get to hear from him. So just want you to pray for him. And then last week, I talked and shared a little bit about SB 14. SB 14, if you remember it, um, the uh, assembly, state assembly uh, rejected it. And it was a um, uh, proposed law to make um, sex trafficking um, sentences a felony. But the Democrats in the um, committee um, said, no, we don't want to make it a felony to do that. They wanted to make it just kind of a slap on the wrist and not much of anything. So through prayer and through, quite honestly, a lot of outpouring of the public, uh, the committee re-voted upon that, and now it will go to the whole um, assembly with that as a felony as opposed to just a misdemeanor. So it, it is so important that we stay involved, that we're in prayer, because think about that. Um, I don't know if you know, but sex trafficking is like a $150 trillion um, um, it, it, 
I don't want to call it an industry, um, evil, wicked, um, yeah, whatever we want to call it. It's evil. And if we don't stand up against some of those things, and I, and, and I would share with you, there are so many stories about people that are um, hearing or watching a little kid or um, you know a teenager and they're acting a certain way and they intervene and they save a child from going into you know where sex traffickers are. It's a responsibility, so we should be in prayer about that. And our legislature, as evil as uh, some of the votes that they do, um, at least this one is a good step. So keep praying about that. It's extremely important, which then tells us that we should continue to um, pray for elected officials, from our president to our school board to our city councils to our governor. Um, you know, even if you don't agree with their politics, First of all, God still loves them. He desires salvation for them. But he also desires that we pray against the evil. Um, because, you know, um, in um, one, of, one of my favorite prophecy uh, scriptures is uh, Daniel 12, 10. And it says there, which we're seeing, the wicked will do wickedly. And we see that over and over again in our land. And so we need to be in prayer against that. Amen? Pray for Israel. If you haven't heard, Benjamin Netanyahu just uh, um, early his Sunday morning had a pacemaker put in. Remember a week ago, he was in the hospital for dehydration. They ended up putting um, a heart monitor on him and then had to go in real fast to get a pacemaker. And why that's significant is there's conflict in Israel that's pretty intense. In fact, it's very similar to what's going on in America. And so he had to be in the Knesset, which is their, their um, legislative body. Um, he had to be in there because they're doing a vote today, their, our Sunday, their Monday, on what's called judicial reform. And it's something that is needed, um, but there's tremendous conflict. And so he needed to be there. Uh, and so he went in, had the pacemaker, and be in the Knesset today. Um, and so pray for Israel. Pray for Benjamin Netanyahu. He is a man that um, many people know made a profession of faith. Um, for a, a Jew, that is uh, um, pretty significant. Uh, and so we need to be in prayer over uh, Israel as well. Amen? So I gave you a lot of prayer items. Um, let's do that. Let's pray and let's enter into worship. Lord, you are God. There is no other. We're thankful, Father, that we can call you our Lord and our Savior. And I pray, Father, for elected officials. I pray, Lord, that you would do just an a, a, a unbelievable work in our hearts that we would be convicted to do as you call us to do. In prayer, in word, in studying the word, in supporting those around us, Father, that truly desire to serve you. I pray for a blessing upon our worship team that you would do just a great work in them and through them. And I pray for Pastor Rick that you, Lord, would just encourage his heart to share a message that you have given him. Lord, above all, I pray for each of us that we would receive a message from you that would impact our lives to do what you call us to do. We love you. We praise you. You are God. There is no other. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> 